A lot of people think that carjackings don't happen much in the US, but here we see two examples of why that's wrong. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Chicago. We have here not one, but two carjackings caught on surveillance camera that are gonna teach us some important lessons about the speed with which carjackings come, about the transitional space that is your car, and about getting out of the danger zone as fast as you can. First carjacking we're gonna see here is in the daytime. You see this guy getting out of his car. Everything's normal, right? Not a whole lot going around, though we can't see what's going on in front of the car. You see the guy walking from the top right. He is definitely in the mix here. And what we're about to see is a guy from the left side come up and show a gun to the victim. And when he does, the victim backs off, tosses his keys down there, and these guys are gonna grab it. And now they are all gonna converge on the car. We see here five different guys, and our victim is kind of hanging out until he realizes, man, that's a bad idea. He gets out of there and these guys are all gonna jump in his car and take it off for a joyride. News story I read says they haven't caught anybody in this instance. Second one, the car is in the middle here and we see this couple, it's a brand new Honda. They are getting out of the car and everything here is fairly normal. They're just, you know, parking on the street because it's Chicago and there's not always off street parking. And they're, you know, checking everything in their car and everything's normal until about right now. What's gonna happen is this guy's gonna run on from the right hand side, point a gun at him, two guys running up here and they're gonna tell them to run off. Well, the husband does, but the wife doesn't because the guy's snatching her purse as well. So the husband's like, oh no, I can't leave my wife out here. And he comes back and gets a gun pointed at him. Now it looks like he's limping a little bit there, but the news story says that nobody was badly injured. I don't think he was shot. I don't know if he stepped on something or whatever, but they run out of there and the guys are gonna take off their car. And again, nobody is caught in this one that I know of. Let's go back and learn some lessons on this one. There's several that are important. First of all is when and why you would go back and why you would stay in the danger zone. So you see this guy here, he's the only one in the car. So he's looking around for what's going on, but these kind of attacks come kind of out of nowhere. So when he sees this starting to go down, he just backs away from the car. And that's a good idea. And when the guy says, hey, give me your keys, he throws the keys at him. That was a fine idea. And if you were armed, this was the time to launch a counter ambush because your life is still in danger with the guys threatening you with a gun there. So if you had a firearm, that was the time to use it. But instead, if you didn't have a firearm, toss those keys and then run like heck. You're gonna lose the car anyway, so just get out of the danger zone. Instead, this guy kind of sticks around in the danger zone and I'd really recommend you don't. If there's nobody to protect, just get the heck out of there and file an insurance claim. That's a new car, it's clearly insured and not you know, leave yourself in a spot for them to hurt you. Same thing with this second couple here. I shortened the beginning just a little bit, but as the bad guys are about to show up, we wanna think about why wouldn't we run off, okay? And the reason is, is because there are people involved. So they run these folks off, they tell them to run, and the husband goes, but he has to stop because they've gone and snatched his wife's purse and she is still in the danger zone. That's the reason that you would stay in the danger zone is to protect a loved one, especially when you're the self-defender. If you had a firearm here, if that, the husband had a firearm here, that that would have been the time to use it, get it out, start driving those guys away. Of course, being careful of his wife in the line of fire. The other guy here has a firearm pointed at him now and you have to teach your non-self-defending spouse. I don't know if either of these spouses are self-defenders, but this woman stayed in the danger zone. You have to teach your non-self-defending spouse to get out of the danger zone, if at all possible, because she doesn't run for a long time. So instead of that, make sure you train even those who are not self-defenders that if bad things go down, their job is to get down and to get away from the danger zone as fast as they can to let you deal with it. Thankfully, it doesn't look like anybody was badly hurt here, but he had to go back into that danger zone to protect his wife. So we know when that we stay in the danger zone and when we get out of it, out of these two carjackings, so that we can cover our ASP.